here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Glad you're here at the Iowa State Fair. If you take a seat just for a couple minutes, I'll tell you a little bit about why I'm running for state auditor. There's basically two things that answer that question for you. First, I grew up in Decorah, northeast Iowa. My first job was catching chickens, uh, and I like to fish and hunt. But the wonderful thing about growing up in a small town is you can do all those things and be a skateboarder at the same time, because you can do everything in a small town. I spent my junior and my senior year in high school working to get a skate park built in Decora, and it changed my perspective on what I thought I should do and could do with my life. It made me very much interested in public service as a vocation. I think service is something we're all called to do, and I felt in doing that 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 was something that I found real meaning in. The second thing is the last seven years, which I spent working in Attorney General Tom Miller's office as Assistant Attorney General. All the opportunities that I had there, all the learning that I did there, uh, I owe in part to Attorney General Tom Miller because he gave me that opportunity. He's a great guy to work under. He's got Democrats and Republicans working under him in the Attorney General's office, and he does a great job of helping people understand how those statewide offices are supposed to be focused on public service. And in my time there, I prosecuted more public corruption and more major financial crime than anyone else in the state of Iowa over the last decade. So if you heard about the Iowa uh, Film Office tax credit scandal, if you remember that, I prosecuted most of those criminal cases. In addition to that, the guy that rigged all those lottery jackpots all around the country, I led the investigation that uncovered him and the prosecution that held him accountable. I also did a lot of work with local and county offices prosecuting people who were stealing from taxpayers in their local area. And in that time, I worked a great deal with the state auditor's office. Very much enjoyed the people that I worked with. They're passionate about what they do. They care a lot about what they do. Uh, they are very good CPAs and accountants. What I found my, my trouble was, though, that the office has only CPAs and accountants in it, even though they're conducting law enforcement investigations. They've got nobody in the office who has actually got a law enforcement background. No former cops, no former police officers, no former prosecutors like myself. And so they would do things differently than what someone would do who's got experience in a courtroom. Those investigations are supposed to hold up in court. They're supposed to make sure that we have what we need on the legal side of things to hold people accountable. And I can tell you as I stand right here today that those investigations will be better off if they have a team of both CPAs and accountants and law enforcement professionals working together. Right now it's a little bit like a football team with 11 quarterbacks on offense playing at the same time. I don't think that lawyers are better than CPAs and accountants. I think that lawyers and CPAs together are better than either of them on their own. But it wasn't until I'd been in the office about five years that I started thinking about doing something else. I very much enjoyed my time there. Uh, Tom Miller was a great boss, a great supervisor, and someone that really is the Dean of Iowa Attorneys General around the country. He's been Attorney General longer than anyone else in the country, and he knows how to do it, and he knows how to run an elected office. But the fundamental day-to-day -day of what I was doing, uh, frankly, was very dark. Every day when you wake up and you're only working on criminal cases, the best that you can do, the very best day you can have is to take a really horrific situation, oftentimes the absolute worst thing that has ever happened to somebody, and make it less bad. You can't actually make it better. You can't make it good. And at the end of it, no one ever says, I'm glad that all this happened. Things are better now. It's still a dark period in people's lives. And for me, a winning day in the office is where you get somebody sent to prison for embezzling $160,000. But if they've got an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old, you're not clicking your heels when you leave the courthouse. That wasn't a good fit for me. I'm someone that fundamentally believes that we can do better and we can work to improve our communities. I have that feeling and I have that belief in part because of that skate park experience when I was in Decora. And so when I started feeling that way and started feeling that mismatch, I started thinking about, well, maybe I should do something else. And I thought about what I knew about the state auditor's office and decided to dig around a little bit. I read Iowa chapter 11 three times. And what you see in there is that the state auditor's office actually also has the ability to make efficiency recommendations every single time they do an audit. 
and they were required to do over a thousand in the current state auditor's first term, they can provide recommendations to that county and to that city as to how they can save taxpayer money. They can tell them new ways to pinch pennies and a different way to squeeze a dollar. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, they're not doing it. Over a thousand audits issued, and yet in the current state auditor's re-election press release, stated that only several had efficiency recommendations. I don't think that's good enough. I don't like that. I don't like fiscal irresponsibility. And I think we ought to have someone in the office that's working hard to make sure that every piece that we all pay in as taxpayers is being taken care of. And it's being looked after and also it's being, they're finding new ways to use it more efficiently. And I'm excited about that. That to me looks like an unbuilt skate park. It's an opportunity to serve our state. It's not partisan. It's not left. It's not right. It's just making sure the office is doing more with its legal authority. And that budget issue is an important one. If you haven't noticed, our budget over the last few years has gotten pretty tight. The current state office, state auditor has been in office for five years. In that five years, we went from a $1 billion surplus in Iowa to a 100 million, over $100 million deficit last year. This is the office that's supposed to be the taxpayer's watchdog, but this state auditor hasn't barked, despite that surplus turning into a deficit. And in the last fiscal year, we had quarterly cuts. Every three months, the budgets for state regents institutions and state agencies got lower and lower and lower. And then again, at the very end of the year, we borrowed $100 million to get through the end of the fiscal year. Yet, at the very end of that year, the state auditor looked back at that budget, and despite it being cut four times during the course of the year, said it was a stable budget. And despite having to borrow $100 million to get through the end of the fiscal year, said it was balanced and said it was responsible. I disagree, and I think most Iowans would disagree as well. We've got to have someone in that office who puts the public ahead of their party. I'm proud of having done that in the Attorney General's office. As I said, Tom Miller hires Republicans and Democrats. I had two direct supervisors while I was there. Both were Republicans. I'm proud of the fact that when I was in the Attorney General's office, I prosecuted Democrats and Republicans just the same. I treated them no different just because of their partisan affiliation. And I think we need more of that in people in elected office, not less. Our campaign is going incredibly well so far. We kicked off last November. We have raised a record amount of money from people for a state auditor's race. In fact, we've raised three times the record, and we've done it with three times the number of donors, and we've done it without taking any corporate PAC money at all. That's something my opponent can't say. Yeah. Thank you. And while we're on the subject of money in politics, let's just take a second to step back and remember it's kind of silly that we measure our campaign's success by talking about how much money they raised. What our election should be about is character and ideas and whether or not you can stand up for regular ions and get people to agree upon a common interest even if they have different ideas. Not about fundraising. That said, it's the system that we've got and we're doing very well with it. I'm proud of the way our campaign has been run so far. I'm very happy with the help that I've gotten from so many people all around our state. And it means a lot to me to have support from people all over Iowa and even friends and family who don't live in Iowa and who aren't real concerned with who the state auditor is in Iowa, other than they know me and they're excited to support me and my campaign. I would love to have everybody who's sitting here help me and listening help me out in a couple ways. Number one, we've got bumper stickers, we've got yard signs, folks, and they make a difference. People do not know me very well, all right? But if the more they see my name, the more they understand that I'm a guy that people are supporting because I've got yard signs and bumper stickers out, the more likely they are to think, you know what? He must be okay. Yard signs are right over here. The other thing I want to ask you to do, please start ignoring me right now by pulling out your smartphones. Go to Facebook and type in Rob Sand and hit the like button. This might be the only time you have somebody who appreciates, as they're speaking to you, you staring at your phone. So if you haven't liked my page yet, please start staring at your phone to go on there and like it. That's about the only form of free advertising that we get in politics. I've got a free Facebook account, so do you, so do most of your friends. If you like my page and then you hit the share button, your friends who are not listening to me today, who aren't here, 
can learn a little bit about my race, can learn a little bit about my background, and can learn a little bit about why people of all political stripes in Iowa are supporting my race for state auditor. Finally, the last thing I want to ask you to do is pitch in. If you liked what you heard here today, $5 makes a difference, $10 makes a difference. Every little bit that we collect helps us reach people with my message that you got to hear today who maybe weren't at the state fair, weren't able to get out, or who frankly don't like going to political events but do like voting. We gotta reach those folks too. Again, I'm really excited about this office doing more for Iowans. It's supposed to be this taxpayer's watchdog, and what we've been saying for the last nine months is that we wanna wake up the watchdog. It can do more than it has ever done if we have someone in the office who's got the energy and the aggressiveness to ask questions on behalf of Iowa's taxpayers. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions from anyone. Any questions? Yes? Uh, happy birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> I turned 36 tomorrow. My son's birthday, too. I know what your mom's going to do. Anyway, uh, my question is about the recent really good article by Kathy Bolton about the Iowa State Fair's audit. Mm -hmm. And it talked about the millions that they made and blah, blah, blah. The last bullet point in her fat sidebar was that they gave a $250 bonus. 16 employees in two extra days and didn't show how that benefited the people of Iowa. And I have great concern that we've become so anti-worker. How the hell do you think you raise $11 million? And I don't know who those 16 people are. I've got no flush in this game, but I'm concerned about that attitude that the one note that they lifted up was about something that was for a person who was working. Sure as opposed to the sure. people who, the, the millions that were raised. The, the question raised is asking whether or not we should be criticizing the state fair for giving a $250 bonus to 16 workers. And whether or not that's something that's anti-worker because the point of the bonus is to give people uh, some level of incentive for having maybe worked harder. And do we really need to question that? You raise a fair, you raise a fair question. And I think that it's actually very similar to a point that was made to me uh, when we were traveling southeast Iowa yesterday. Uh, There's a woman who's an older mayor in her town, very small town that was hit very hard by floods. And they were able to get some grants to help rebuild their town. But one of the things that they said has been the hardest piece of what they're doing has been the audits that have followed. Now audits are supposed to be hard. They're supposed to be uncomfortable, right? Nobody likes getting audited in. But she made a similar point in that she said, we are spending so much time and money keeping up with these audits that it's been very hard to focus on actually rebuilding our town. And she would point out the ways that they would nitpick small things that they were doing. And I think she actually specifically made a similar point. They reimbursed someone for expenses and the auditor questioned whether or not re that reimbursement was in the public interest. Now, here's my response to that. Again, I think the people who work in that office are very conscientious about doing their job. But one of the ways we can make those audits less about nitpicking and more about partnership is by, again, moving towards making more efficiency recommendations. It shouldn't have to be about whether or not you're focused on finding just every little smidgen and whether or not there's a public purpose there. That is part of it. They do have to do that. But the other thing they should be doing is talking about whether or not that's an effective use of money. Maybe those people work harder because they get that bonus. I don't know. But if we would have a state auditor's office that was looking into efficiencies, which would include ways that you make people work more effectively, and incorporating them into their uh, audits, then I think you get to a situation where people are feeling like, yeah, you're coming in and doing your audit, but you're also a partner to me because you're pointing out ways that we can save money for taxpayers, and you're pointing out the fact that maybe this is a good thing to do because it helps people feel rewarded and then they want to come back next year. I don't know what the economic figures would look like for those kinds of bonuses, but if they're out there, they ought to be incorporated into that kind of analysis where the state auditor's office can say, you know, they paid these bonuses, we've, look at, we've looked around at the literature and we've found that people who are paid bonuses are X percent more or less likely to continue their work. It's something that they should look at if they're looking at the bigger picture and trying to promote efficiency. Any other questions from anyone?
Where's the victory party going to be? So here's, I appreciate your spirit. A lot of people, when they're candidates, they, are, they, they say, when I win. I don't say that. I say if I win. Because I think when I win is disrespectful to the process of voters in, elected, in the electoral process, right? We are supposed to have people in office who respect the will of the people. And when the people vote to put a particular president in office, that's what they have voted to do. I'm not going to tell you where my victory party is, in part because I haven't decided, but in part because I'll probably just be calling it an election night watch party. I don't know if it's going to be a victory party. That's up to everybody here and whether or not they want to vote. I appreciate your support and your, sp and your spirit, though. Thank you. Yes, sir? What could the state do differently for the auditor, particularly about Mr. Jameson and the IFA Sure. Uh, the gentleman asked a question about uh, Dave Jameson and the IFA issue. That is a very good question. The number one thing that the state can do differently, particularly the state auditor's office, is be aggressive. This is supposed to be a watchdog. Watchdogs are supposed to bark. This is not complicated. This is an office where I heard, uh, as just a candidate, I wasn't in the Attorney General's office, I, I heard that there was misspending in the office and that this lease that they had signed on a new property uh, was going to be financially irresponsible. So I did what you should do. I sniffed around. That's what a watchdog does. I, I issued a public records request and at the same time that I did that I also issued a press release that I was issuing the public records request. I wasn't digging around in secret just to see if I could find anything. And what we found was this lease that was going to waste six million dollars over the next 20 years. And that, this, and that the IFA had not shared that information on the long view with the executive council when asking them for taxpayer money. After that is when a lot more uh, folks started sniffing around the issue and digging into it. I know it's not an easy or it's not a, a technical answer, but honestly the best answer to that question is if you're the watchdog and you see something or you uh, hear something that's suspicious, you sniff around and you bark. Thank you. How much more time have we got? We got. We still got three minutes. Any other questions from anyone? Another one, sir. Yes, absolutely. What about the misallocation or misspending of federal funds by workforce development and the non-repercussion of that agency that's been brought up? Uh, that I am not as familiar with. Was this from a couple of years ago? No, that was like a couple of weeks ago. I think the register brought it up about the workforce development, the spending funds that are designated for certain federal uses when they shouldn't be, and when past employees have bought this up, a few of their employees have been reassigned or out of the job in a few days after bringing those up. So again, uh, you know, that's good journalism. That's the register doing their job is sniffing around and putting some sunshine on, thing, on things. I mean, that's really the role of the state auditor's office, too. If they hear anything about that, they should be making that a part of their investigation. It doesn't take a whole lot for the state auditor to initiate their own investigation and start figuring out what's going on if they hear anything about that. I couldn't tell you if anyone in the state auditor's office had heard any rumors of anything like that going on. Uh, if they haven't responded by saying they're going to do an investigation, then that's how they should be responding right now. Which brings me to another point. Uh, the office itself right now um, is not run very efficiently, even though it's supposed to promote efficient government in Iowa. Every time they want to analyze bank records, they have people with college degrees and often CPA certifications who are sitting down at their desks and they are re-entering the bank records into Microsoft Excel with their fingers, one digit at a time. I can't imagine very many people that I know who have college degrees who would feel that's a good use of their time. That's why a former employee that recently sat down with me said after, when he left after four years, only three of the 15 people who started with him were still in the office. That is not the sign of a well-run office. There are at least a dozen computer programs out there right now that would automate that process and make all the people who work in the office more able to do some investigative digging rather than just hunting and pecking and re-entering data. Thank you. Yes. Oh, that's a very good question. Does the state auditor need to be a CPA to do audits? The answer is no. Uh, and I, 
Right. I might be premature on this, but that brings up an interesting question because one of the things that we've been talking about in our campaign from the beginning has been truth and integrity and accountability. Uh, my opponent has been saying that you've got to be a CPA to issue audits. Uh, I notified her that was incorrect, asked her to stop saying it. How hard, can I finish answering the question, is that allowed? Okay, I will, I'll keep it relatively short. Uh, I asked, she continued to say it, I asked her again, pointed out to her how it was incorrect. Uh, my understanding is that last night for the first time at a fundraiser, she did admit that people who are not CPAs, if elected state auditor, can issue audits. So kudos to her for admitting that and keeping up on integrity. Again, Rob Sand running for state auditor. Thank you all very much.